सो हेलो गाइज एंड वेलकम टू मिस्टर ऑल जी सॉरी फॉर नॉट बींग एबल टू पोस्ट अ वीडियो दिस वीक बिकॉज आई वॉज लाइक रियली बिजी सो टूडेज टॉपिक फॉर डिस्कशन इज गोइंग टू बी द टैक्स एंड कंट्रोल सो वॉट एग्जैक्टली कम्स इन टू योर माइंड वेन यू हेयर दिस वर्ड द टैक्स एंड कंट्रोल टू माई माइंड इट मीन्स दैट इट इज गोइंग टू बी अ सुपर बाइक और अ सुपर कार नाउ tax and control the word itself is sort of misnomer in the way that it never actually increases the available tax on to your bike what is actually does is that it uses the available tax on in the most optimum way possible apart from that we are also going to talk about in this video how a tax and control is deployed by various manufacturers what are the methods they use like BMW and Ducati or say Kawasaki or Yamaha now when you hear this word the tax and control most of the time you also hear the word that it has got four stage tax and control or five stage tax and control so what is the meaning of that that is also something we are going to discuss now if your bike has got a tax and control it is almost certain that your bike has got ride by wire throttle and ABS and in these bikes there is a proper ecu which monitors the fueling how much fuel is being injected to the engine and how much power is being delivered at particular moment of time now as you know that in abs there is a rev counter for both the wheels which monitors the rpm of both the wheels simultaneously now what traction control does is that okay so let me ask a quick question to you have you ever wondered why a speedometer wire is always connected to your front wheel it is because if your front wheel is moving that because that is free wheel so if your front wheel is moving i'm talking about bike of course so if your front wheel is moving that simply means that your bike is going ahead and if your rear wheel is moving it does not necessarily means that your bike is going ahead because uh, your bike might be on some slippery surface where uh, wheels are slipping but uh, bike is not moving ahead that also could be the case that's why the speedometer is always connected to your front wheel now what is the loss of traction suppose you are going on a slippery surface then what will happen that your rear wheel if you are throttling the engine your rear wheel will start slipping but your bike will not move ahead i mean it will move ahead with a slower speed if it is moving but uh, you are supplying power to your rear wheel so in that case traction controls comes into handy because it's a safety feature and suppose if you have applied too much of throttle that your bike's rear wheel starts slipping and starts rotating but your bike is not going ahead and it might result in an accident now you also hear that it has got five stage traction control so suppose in the first stage of traction control the maximum allowable rpm difference is 5 and uh, in fifth stage it is 0 so the fifth stage is safer than first one now let's talk about how an ecu of the engine controls it so you are already getting the rpm difference from both the speed sensors suppose your front wheel is moving at an rpm of around 40 and your rear wheel is moving at an rpm of around 48 what that means that you are on a slippery surface and your rear wheel is slipping while you are supplying the power but your vehicle is moving at an rpm of 40 of that of that is of the front wheel so what ecu will do is that it will set the power of your engine so as to uh, bring the rear wheel rpm in that 5 rpm range difference that is 45 or within 45 rpm so that is what a uh, traction control does now if you were in the fifth stage of traction control it will shut down the power of engine it will bring the engine to 40 and again if it will increase it will do that again so it keeps doing that and that's how a traction control works now what are the methods and how an ecu controls the power of the engine there are usually three ways of controlling the power of the engine the first one is the misfire what misfire means is that the spark will not be generated in certain certain stage so as to the reduce the power of the engine suppose if your engine is four cylinder engine and if one cylinder is being misfired what will happen is that 
the power will be reduced by 25 percent because one engine is not getting power now the second method of controlling the power of the engine is adjusting the throttle because your bike has right by wire electronic throttle so electronically adjusting the throttle now the third method of control uh, reducing the power of the engine is retarding the ignition time now what is that okay let's talk about a petrol engine now the spark is ignited in the compression stove what that means is that when your cylinder has sucked the air and fuel mixture and when, when your piston goes up it will compress that air and fuel mixture the spark is ignited when it is almost at the top of its position so as to give it enough time to the gases and fuel to combust properly and give you a maximum combustion efficiency now if you want to reduce the power of that what will you do is that uh, you will ignite the spark a little late so what will happen that it will not get enough time to combust properly and your power will be automatically reduced and that is called retarding the ignition time so third type is that now let's talk about what methods various manufacturers deploy in their traction control technology now if your bike is aprilia or bmw unit what it will do that it will retard the ignition time as well as it will electronically adjust the throttle when the traction control is needed now Ducati's traction control technology deploys retarding the ignition timing and using the cylinder misfires. Kawasaki uses only cylinder misfires while Yamaha uses all of the above. As the technology has evolved, lot of manufacturers have also started using lean sensor and gear shift position. So the ECU registers all of that and how much power is being delivered to your rear wheel and as it has got already got the feeding in which stage it is it will accordingly adjust the rpm of both the wheels and relieve you the lean angle sensor basically helps suppose you are if you are taking a corner and while taking a corner uh, you just you are exiting the corner you what you do is you usually use the throttle now if your bike has got a plenty of power what it what will happen that the rear wheel gets a lot of power and that time your rear wheel starts slipping and if the rear wheel and the front wheel rpm gets uh, gets a lot of difference what will happen that your bike will slide away and an accident could occur so the traction control measures the lean angle and it will know that you are you are taking a corner so at that point of time it will uh, adjust the throttle it will use the retard ignition timing or it will misfire your cylinder so as to minim uh, decrease the power of your rear wheel so that you can exit the corner safely so i think you have got a uh, pretty much a good idea about what is a traction control and what it does it is quite helpful in roads which are gravelly or slushy roads and it is also helpful when you are exiting the corner or when you are taking the corner i think this video completes pretty much each and every aspect which is about tax and control and if you have got anything more to ask do leave that in the comment section below please like and share the video Thank